Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Patricia Mota, and I am uh, the president and CEO for ACE, the Hispanic Alliance for Career Enhancement. Thank you for joining us today uh, for our weekly webinar series, uh, today being on working remotely, how to succeed in the new workplace. Um, many of us uh, either have uh, um, worked from home either a couple of days a week. Um, some of us, it's we're brand new, uh, given a current climate and situation, been kind of forced to a new way of working. And so we're happy to jump dive into this topic and have a phenomenal uh, subject matter expert that's joining us today to be able to share uh, her own insights. Uh, before we get started, uh, please uh, make sure that if you have any questions that you uh, type them in. Uh, we will address them at, at the very end or feel free throughout. Um, I will mention them to uh, our presenter and we can have an engaging uh, webinar here. Uh, just so that you know, I have on um, the screen just an overview of ASE. If you're not yet a registered member on the website, please take a few minutes to do so. Uh, we have several programs. Uh, that are not only uh, for to help you with your own leadership developments and, and provide insights, but also if you're in transition or you're looking for your next career opportunity, uh, recently experienced a layoff or furlough, uh, we are working with various um, employer partners that are hiring. And so you may have seen our new career board platform that was announced. Uh, and we'll continue to send resources and information. Um, please do also know that if you have any ideas or suggestions or ways that we can better support you, that, that you reach out to us as well. Uh, the Mujeres de Asset programs for our uh, women uh, professionals. Uh, we have our Emerging Latino Leadership Program, our University, uh, El Futuro, which is our high school, uh, various virtual networking opportunities coming up, uh, and then our uh, 30th annual conference that takes place on um, August, um, should we be able to have it in person. Um, also, uh, to add to that, we do offer free career coaching. Uh, please go to the website. Um, this is due to the generosity of our network of um, executive and career coaches that have volunteered and been so gracious to volunteer their time to offer their resources and insights to you. Again, whether you are in transition, whether you're looking for um, your next um, career opportunity or you've been recently you know, laid off, please um, take advantage of these free opportunities. Uh, and here also the next upcoming uh, webinar series. Uh, last week we talked about updating your resume. Uh, today we're talking about working from uh, remotely. Uh, next week we'll be uh, virtually uh, interviewing virtually. Uh, there's a lot of tips and tools that sometimes we may not have thought of that are, are, are useful for us to successfully prepare and to really make that good impression virtually. Uh, and then also if you are a part of or are engaging in uh, your employee resource group or your business resource group or also known as affinity networks, um, we'll be providing some opportunities to engage virtually. So please join us for that as well. Again, you can register at asaonline.org uh, slash events. And Last but not least, I mentioned the new job center, uh, various uh, employment opportunities out there. So please take advantage. Uh, you are able to create a free profile. Uh, so please take some time to do so. When you uh, log on to the Career Center, you're able to search for opportunities, also apply through the Career Center, uh, create your own customized job alerts, uh, and access other tips and tools that are available in that Career Center. And last but not least, please follow us. Uh, we just recently had this morning our first uh, Facebook Live cafecito with um, one of the chiefs for the US Census Bureau, Erica Becker Medina. Uh, we'll continue to have those on a weekly basis on our Facebook page. Um, and these are the other handles uh, for uh, both for LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, and Twitter as well. And so today, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, everyone to Dr. Claire Lynch, uh, who is a uh, professional writer based, joining us from London, based in London. Uh, and she also teaches writing at the University of Cambridge. 
Uh, and she will be uh, speaking to us on not only has she been uh, speaking on this topic for several years, but given as a successful business owner herself has nailed down some tips, tools, and some insights on how to ensure that you are effective when you are working remote. Uh, so I'll hand it over, uh, Claire, I'm gonna uh, have you present. Okay. And then we'll get started. How are you today? I am very well, speaking to you from my home here in London. Wonderful. Well, thank you for, for joining us. I need to find you here, and there you are, and you are now presenter. Okay. Does that look good? That looks great. Thank you. Great. So, um, thank you everyone for joining. It's uh, uh, wonderful to be speaking to you remotely here from London. Uh, just to uh, reiterate and remind you who I am um, and why I am uh, a subject matter expert on working remotely. So I, yes, I'm a trainer, writer and cro coach from Doris and Bertie. And at Doris and Bertie, what we are is we're a London-based consultancy and we work with anyone who needs to write as part of their job. So uh, traditionally, that was always providing the words for them, so copywriting. Increasingly, though, um, it, it involves providing training. So I tend to skill people up so that they can use the words uh, themselves. Clients uh, of mine typically are corporate clients, big corporate international clients. So uh, I've worked with Dow Jones, UBS Investment Bank, Deutsche Bank, BNP Paribas, Microsoft, European uh, Central Bank, these are the types of clients that I work with. So big, large organizations that have to communicate clearly with their clients, with their customers, and with their employees. So given that I'm a writer, what makes me qualified to talk about remote working? Well, like many writers, I have worked from home for 18 years. Um, so I've been serving all these corporate clients from my dining room table. Uh, Today's session is extracted from an online course that I created a few years ago, uh, which has suddenly actually uh, seen a lot more interest in the last month, uh, called Working Remotely, How to Succeed in the New Workplace. If you're interested in getting hold of that course, um, I do offer it as part of a, a larger package of courses uh, on my website. If you, so if you want to check out the sort of thing that I do and what I teach, if you go to dorisandberti.com, uh, you will find my website. And on there I have uh, a platform where I offer a series of writing courses, um, and it's a sort of Netflix for online learning, mostly writing courses, but also included in that package is working remotely. Uh, so there's lots of lots of resources there, if, as well as learning to, or, or getting some tips on how to work remotely, if you want to invest in your writing skills, uh, my online writing school might be something that you might want to check out. It's aimed at business people, copywriters, professional communicators, anyone that needs to communicate as part of their job. Um, and I've got lots of different writing courses on there as well as working remotely. It, uh, you'll find classes on business writing, report writing, email etiquette, anything to help you write better at work. Um, and for anyone on this call, I've created a special offer, so uh, you can get access to all those courses and a lot more uh, extra stuff as well, uh, with 50% off with the special code hello HelloRSA061311. So if you're interested in becoming a better writer as well as a better remote worker, do check that out. But let's uh, get on with the matter in hand. So. What we're going to be covering today is broadly three aspects of remote working. First of all, uh, communication and collaboration, how we maintain those relationships when we're not all sitting cheek by jowl. Productivity and motivation, how you get stuff done when you're uh, not in the office. And finally, boundaries and balance, how, how do you separate work and life, which can be a lot harder when you're working from home. But before I dive in, I suppose I've got a question for you, and I would like to ask you, what challenges do you feel you face when you're working from home? Um, and it might be under these three 
topics or something else. So maybe you could, um, if we can look in the chat, if people can say in the chat, what, what questions do you have about remote working? What challenges have you faced since working from home? So the chat is open. Uh, feel free to respond your thoughts there. I'll let people have a think about that and I will continue if people want to uh, ask questions and mention their uh, challenges or, or have any thoughts. I, hear, I see distraction, so concentration. Yep. Um, that not every team member is as engaged as I would want them to be. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's another one <laughs> that's you hear quite a bit knowing when to stop working. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I can tell you that. Uh, you want me to hopefully, a few more? Um, go carry on. Sure, sure. So, how to set a productive schedule and focus, mm -hmm. uh, balance with children and work, yep. uh, lack of motivation, the day gets away from you, overwhelmed. Yes. Oh, yes. This is all dreadfully familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully by the end of this um, session, you will have some pointers and some ways of dealing with with those challenges. Um, and I think all of those come under at least one of those three topics that we're going to be looking at today. So let's start with communication and collaboration. So I suppose my first tip when you're working from home is that you do need to, in many ways, communicate more, not less. When we're working in the office, uh, you have those water cooler moments, which you don't have when you're all working in your own little uh, homes or uh, at your own dining tables. So you have to engineer those water cooler moments. You have to actively build in uh, social time, Facebook, FaceTime, uh, actively updating people on the progress of a project. Um, so you have to be much more deliberate about- So Dr. Kira, may I interject? Yeah. On the water cooler moment. Uh, yes. For those of us who may not have heard that before, can, can you describe what that that is? Sure, yeah. So a water cooler moment is those moments when you're standing around the water cooler or, or having mm -hmm. a, a coffee in the kitchen and you just, chat about day-to-day -day stuff mm -hmm. so um and it might be work stuff it might be office gossip it might be what you did at the weekend just those little human moments that we take for granted when we're all in the same place uh, so you have to recreate them uh remotely um I think also when it comes to communicating more, not less, it's not just about communicating with the people that you're working with. In the current situation, you may find yourself working with a partner for the first time. Uh, you may be um, you know, never having shared workspace with a spouse or, or even with housemates. Um, and I think we need to communicate more with those, those people in our lives too, um, being open and uh, honest about your working styles. Um, you know, if one of you likes to have the music on and one of you needs absolute silence, or if one of you uh, is an introvert that needs to dig into work while the other one likes to talk, and communicative about those working styles, I think is probably one way you can cope with without sort of falling out with those who are working around you in your immediate vicinity. So communicate more, not less. And obviously picking the right tools, um, it's no longer just about email, right? Um, I'm assuming that most of you will be familiar with many of the tools in the top line. So uh, using Skype and Zoom for sort of that face-to-face -face contact, building in that deliberate FaceTime. Uh, for giving feedback, for, for thrashing out ideas. Um, Slack, the messaging platform, is great for getting quick 
answers to questions. It can be a time sap uh, because it can sort of ping away if you don't manage it well. I think managing Slack is a whole other course, um, but it's great for quick check-ins. And of course, Trello and Asana and other project management uh, software for, for managing day-to-day uh, -day work and collaborating as a team. Uh, some others that I have recently discovered that I think are fabulous tools to maybe check out. Uh, Chimp Champ. Um, this is Chimp or Champ. This is a, a, a service that allows you to send a sort of weekly pulse survey to your team uh, where it will ask them how they're feeling and uh, give them an opportunity to provide anonymous feedback um, and just let you know uh, just let you check in on how they're doing so uh, if you are managing a team that might be something to to check out another great tool that I've recently discovered that but I haven't actually got round to uh, using yet but it looks fantastic and I'm certainly going to check it out is crisp which blocks background noise um, now if you've got children or pets or like me, a neighbor who likes to do DIY every afternoon, uh, this will come into its own because it blocks background noise when you're on that Zoom call or that Skype call. Um, so um, you're not going to be, you, those you're talking to aren't going to be distracted by um, the noisy things around you. Another great tool that I've discovered recently is Loom, uh, and this allows you to send quick video messages so rather than for example having to save a long send a long explanatory email if we're talking communication where where it's not going to be immediate um asynchronous communication uh you can send a, a an email file a, a video file and it's great for explainers for screen sharing for demos you can talk people through um and send a little video file and it also integrates with trello and slack so that's certainly one to, to check out if you're having to do that kind of communication on the topic of email i thought i'd um provide a couple of little um hints on how to look better on webcam so we're all now having to do zoom calls all the time so just some hints on how to do that well and i've had several zoom calls facetime calls in recent weeks where i think i've probably seen all of these rules broken so um first tip have the light source in front of you if you sit in front of a window your face will be blacked out because the camera will be exposing for what's behind you and obviously that's very unnerving for whoever is talking to you they can't see the expressions on your face position the camera correctly uh, position it at eye level so you're talking to the camera not down to the camera uh, it, you look rather threatening if you loom over the camera uh, and equally if the camera is above you, you will look submissive. Uh, so keep it at eye level. This is probably one I might be slightly guilty of because I do tend to take a lot of notes when I'm in a meeting. Um, try, though, to make a special effort to look at the screen rather than your notes. If you break eye contact, it's not like when you're in a room with someone and you can nod and give verbal acknowledgement that you're listening. Um, it, it's much harder to acknowledge that you're listening if you're not looking at the screen. Close other apps. Um, if you have other apps open, not only are you likely to have annoying pings going on in the background, you might especially if you're screen sharing you don't want embarrassing things popping up on the screen so uh, always uh, observe that sort of hygiene i suppose when it comes to what you're wearing um avoid busy patterns if you wear something that has got thin stripes or something very patterned or or, or dotted like the shirt that i'm wearing there it looks okay in a frozen screen but if i were moving around that would shimmer and it would be very distracting and slightly painful on the eyes so try and avoid busy patterns 
And of course, do smile. One of the things that the camera does is it drains you of energy. So if you're not smiling, you will probably look sterner than you feel. Uh, I tend to be, this is probably something I'm quite guilty of. I very much focus on what someone's saying and that can make me look like I'm actually quite cross with them. I mean, I'm not cross in that picture. I'm, I'm focusing intently, but I think with a smile, I would look less like I was um, not very pleased. So some other um, tips on maintaining good relationships. Um, basically, don't go missing in action. Um, if you need to um, go offline for whatever reason, so it might be that you're having lunch, it might be that you need to attend to your children, it might mean that you need to do some deep work and that it's not helpful to have Slack messages pinging up every five minutes. You need to focus on a really intent task. Um, just let people know. So very uh, almost common sense, you would think, but um, still I think needs to be said that, that you should always just let people know if you need to be offline for a while and just let them know when you're going to be back. Another tip for maintaining good relationships is to wield Hanlon's razor. Now, Hanlon's razor is the aphorism that you should never ascribe to malice that which can be explained by incompetence. We know how it is. Tone can get lost in nonverbal communications. Uh, jokes can land poorly. Sarcasm might not come across or you say something and it might be interpreted as sarcastic. Um, so we have to be open and empathetic and assume the best in people. And that's particularly the case when we're not having face to face communication. Um, and I think this is particularly important right now. I think we're all going through an incredibly tough time. Um, we're all you know, in this extraordinary situation, which is frightening. Um, and I think we need to acknowledge that um, and just be very kind to each other. Um, one way you can manage tone when working remotely is if you're working in Slack or via email or whatever messaging system you use, being liberal with emojis. Now, I am an quite an old-fashioned writer and it took me many years to get round to come round to the idea of the emoji i always thought it was something that made you look like a 14 year old girl and and like you you know you, you weren't articulate enough to say it in words but actually i have totally come around to emojis they can really soften a message and they can also speed up communication so for example if you've got a thread or a comment on Slack or whatever messaging software you use, a little thumbs up might might be, you know, I've got this, or um, a clap might mean good job, well done. Um, so be liberal with those emoji, emojis as a very quick way to maintain morale, to share the love. It's also important, I think, when you're working remotely to talk about the small stuff. So again, if you're on Slack or other, uh, another messaging platform, having a random chat for, for gifts, for jokes, for emojis, for non-work chatter, having that random chatter, having that random channel, especially devoted to that, so it's not clogging up the main work channels, but provides an outlet just allows for that human contact, those water cooler moments. Um, and likewise, if you've got, if you're having a Zoom call, um, spending five minutes catching up before you dive into the work, um, as you would, no doubt, in a face-to-face -face meeting, um, have those check-ins. Uh, if that's what people need, you might be working with teams where with, you know, or, or individuals who are introverted and don't actually need that small stuff and find it incredibly stressful. So it's slightly about reading the room, but 
but being very deliberate in your reading of the room. So that's some thoughts on um, communication and collaboration. Let's move on to my second topic, which is productivity and motivation. So my first, the first thing I'd like to say is I think right now we all have to be kind to ourselves and kind to each other. Each other. We are all having to adapt very, very quickly to a new way of working. I think it will become the new normal. I think after this, remote working will become the normal. Um, but we're doing it in extraordinary times, in scary times, in uh, times when, that like a once in a generation moment. Um, you may have children at home or a partner at home that you're not used to having around uh, and your colleagues may be in similar situations. Um, you may be feeling scared. You may, like me, not be sleeping terribly well. You may find yourself um, obsessively and unhealthily attracted to the news uh, and unable to pull yourself away from it. Um, so when it comes to remote working, I think in the current climate, we need to think about deadlines and being realistic about deadlines and communicating deadlines, uh, discussing them with your manager or with your team, and maybe expecting that we're all going to be less productive than we no would normally be. And it's not simply because we're working at home, it's because we're working at home in the most extraordinary circumstances. So I think being kind to ourselves, uh, acknowledging the limits of our productivity. I was on a call with my most brilliant client yesterday, um, who I've worked with for many years, and she's my most brilliant, my most efficient, my most creative client. And halfway through the call, she went, oh my God, I've just realized I've missed another call. I seem to be doing that all the time these days. Um, and it's not simply because she was working from home, because she's done that for many years. It's because She's working from home with her young daughter and because she's in this extraordinary situation where she's having to um, cope with what we're all coping with and, and actually because she's a communicator, she's actually having to do a lot of writing about um, coronavirus comms. So it's having its an emotional toll, toll. So be kind to yourself and others and don't expect yourself to be your most productive best at the moment. But what can we do to be as productive as possible? So one tip is to create a to don't list. Now, we'll all be familiar with a to do list, but it can be very, very um, liberating to get out of your head and onto a piece of paper all the things that you know you shouldn't do today. So all those things that you will find distracting, those procrastination uh, strategies. So it might be folding the laundry or doing the washing up or having a quick peek on Twitter. Make a note of those things and get them, get them into a, uh, acknowledge them, recognize them, get them down on a piece of paper and, and commit to not doing them. So I suppose I've got a, another question here. Have a think now and just maybe mention in the chat, or if you just want to write your to-do list, your to-don't list now, what's on your to-don't list? Maybe you want to jot those things down and get them out in the open now. And if you're happy to share them in the chat, please do. Yeah, as folks are thinking about theirs, um, I, I will say mine is definitely not turning on the news or not watching the news. Yes, I think that's probably the same for me. <laughs> Sorry? At least all day. Exactly, that yeah. Means. I think, yeah, carving out time to, to get that news fix. Yeah, I see web surfing. Don't watch one more than one episode of a show during lunch hour. 
<laughs> and then I think I have a question. What are recommendations for an office setup or domes? Um, don't do laundry. No TV. Yep. But yep. Do not worry. Don't worry. <laughs> yes. I mean, I think it's, you know, I, one aspect of being kind to ourselves is yes tell ourselves don't worry but but obviously that that's very very hard to do but maybe it's we set aside time to do that worrying and and give it in and just don't let it infuse and infect the whole day um, i see it's hard these days i'm squeezing in laundry grocery shopping yeah and then setting boundaries with family members at home for work hours. Yeah. Yes, so I think again that that is about communicating those boundaries and agreeing um, who does what when, you know, and even if it's having, you know, if you're having to tag team childcare, um, just being very, very open and deliberate about that. Okay, so have a think about your to don't lists and um, uh, acknowledge those those uh, time suckers and um, just get them out of your brain and put them to one side. So next tip, um, if you need to focus on uh, a really important task, if you need to do some deep work, so for me, Deep work would usually involve writing something. Um, it's an incredibly um, brain intensive task that cannot be done when you've got notifications from Slack pinging left, right and centre. So um, another tip for getting things done is just be very, very deliberate about signing out and snoozing your notifications and putting that do not disturb sign up. Um, letting people know i suppose it's that don't go missing an action tip again so just being very very deliberate about i'm going to carve out time one thing you can also do is eat the frog um eat the frog is the eating the frog is the idea that you eating a frog is probably the most disgusting thing that you can imagine, the most unpalatable thing that you can imagine. And the idea that, of eating the frog is that you should do the most unpalatable task, uh, the one that you least want to do, do that first. Um, if you do it first, you will feel lighter all day. Um, if you don't do it first, it's going to drain you of energy all day. So find the most horrific task and just get it off your desk. Um, when I have tasks that I'm not particularly looking forward to and or, or tasks that I know are going to require me to put my do not disturb sign up that, I, that are going to require a lot of focus, I work in Pomodoros. Um, so a Pomodoro is a uh, old fashioned kitchen timer, timer in the shape of a tomato. Um, and the idea of working in Pomodoros is that you work in sprints. You set your Pomodoro timer for 25 minutes and you commit to working just for 25 minutes. Now, the great thing about working in Pomodoros is that even if it's the most disgusting frog that you have to eat, we can all commit to working for 25 minutes because it's it's time bound and it's doable it's manageable we can just even if it's the most uh, unpleasant task that we want to do um 25 minutes even i can cope with 25 minutes at the gym which is probably the least uh, my least favorite activity um so you work in sprints of 25 minutes so you start whatever task needs intense focus you set a timer for 25 minutes up to 25 minutes you take a five minute break and then you take do another sprint of 25 minutes followed by a five minute break and you keep doing that you do as many as you need up to four and then you take a longer break um, and this is probably for me the one strategy that has revolutionized my life and has made me much more productive 
as a writer. If I'm struggling to articulate something, to get something down on paper, the first thing I do is switch on a Pomodoro. And what you often find actually is that you commit to working for 25 minutes, but before those 25 minutes are up, you enter the flow state where actually you start to get into the task and it becomes enjoyable. So um, try the Pomodoro technique. You can go to tomatotimer.com, that's the one I use. It's uh, just an online timer that's set in Pomodoros in 25 minute chunks and five minute rest chunks. And you can set that on in the background and it will just go off, the alarm will go when you come to you at the end of your 25 minutes. Other productivity apps that I use that you may be may or may not be familiar with, um, Stay Focused, which allows you to block those sites that you know you have a tendency to spend too much time on. So whether it's Facebook or Twitter or you know at the moment news sites, you can tell Stay Focused that you only want to limit yourself to to a certain number of minutes on those sites per day. Warning, if you've not tried it before, it is incredibly hardcore. It will not let you visit those sites if you try to override it. Um, you can override it, it, it it's hard, but you can, uh, but it will make you feel incredibly guilty. It will, it will flush up these incredibly guilt-inducing messages if you try and override it. Um, another nice little uh, tool that I find helpful is Pocket, and this is great for those um, those times when you risk descending into the electronic rabbit hole, which right now, that tendency to pick at the scab that is the news, um, this allows you to store articles to read later. So it's like a very attractive bookmark, very attractive and, and usable and user-friendly bookmarking software. Um, so you can put all those articles in one place and then come back to them, consume them all in one go. So having that time bound engagement with the news so you're not constantly snacking at the news every, every hour all throughout the day and getting more and more distressed. So allowing yourself that news catch up but making it time bound by shoving everything to po into pocket and um, agreeing with yourself that you'll read it later. So part three, I want to talk about boundaries and balance. So in this section, I've divided it up into three. So morning routines, how to prevent cabin fever in the day and evening rituals. So this is about demarcating work from life. Um, at the moment, it feels very much like work and life are blurring into one and that's particularly because we're, we're doing it all at the, in the same location and, and it's very hard to actually go out. Um, so let's start with morning routines. So the first point is to have a regular morning routine, uh, something that makes the break, marks that break between sleep and work. Now I am not going to judge you if you are a member of the pyjama army. Um, but just dressing and showering and marking that break between sleep and work um, is incredibly healthy. Um, and one way you can do that is to always make your bed. Uh, you see on the screen two famous uh, Navy men who had very different attitudes to the bed. On the right, we have Winston Churchill, who was incredibly productive uh, and worked in bed. Um, but then he also did used to drink uh, whiskey sodas from 10 a.m. in the morning, so maybe not the best role model. On the left, we have William H. McRaven, who uh, went viral a few years ago for a commencement speech he did in which his number one tip was to always make your bed. Now, his thinking was that um, if you make your bed, it's about dealing with the small stuff. If you look after the small stuff, the big stuff will look after itself. 
Um, I've got a much more prosaic reason to always make your bed. Um, and it's not that if you don't, you're somehow slovenly or lazy. Um, it's just that you will, um, you are much less likely to return to your bed if you've made it. And as I say, there's nothing necessarily wrong with working in bed. Winston Churchill did it all the time. Um, it doesn't mean you're lazy. There's nothing morally wrong with that. But what it does mean is that your sleep place is becoming your workplace. Um, and that's probably not what you want. You want your sleep place to be a place of rest, somewhere where you can escape from work. So if you're working in bed, you are blurring the boundaries being between home and a place of relaxation and a place of work. So always make your bed so that you don't return to it. Um, so your morning routine might include going for a walk or a run if that is allowed, if you are, uh, if you have been given permission by the state to, to take a, a bit of daily exercise, um, do do that if you can. Uh, one reason to get out isn't, isn't just the fresh air and the exercise, it's also to get your vitamin D hit, which um, vitamin D is very good for your health. It's particularly good, apparently, for the immune system. And I've heard it's particularly good uh, for the immune system in relation to respiratory diseases. So getting out, getting a bit of sunlight on your face, making that part of a part of your morning routine um, to mark the, the beginning of the day. Another thing you might want to consider is having a mock commute. Now, having to dispense with the commute is one of the benefits of of uh, remote working, uh, not having to get on a crowded tube, not having to spend two hours in traffic either way. It's one of the benefits, but actually, in some ways, commuting itself has a benefit. Um, it's a moment of downtime in the day, a moment of alone time, a moment of, of me time, uh, where you can prepare, where you can reflect on the day ahead. So, if you can find some time to carve out, I mean, I appreciate with children at home, it, it, this might be harder, but maybe this is something that you can agree with a partner if you have your partner at home and you're tag teaming. But having 20 minutes out at the beginning of your day where you read the paper, listen to a podcast, or whatever it is you would do in your car on the way to work or on the train in the way to work, just having that moment of quiet and reflection. So that's your morning. Um, how to avoid cabin fever throughout the day. Um, first of all, do always break for lunch and do it properly. Uh, there is always that tendency to, uh, and temptation to eat al desco. Um, and um, if you can actually build in those breaks, as you might, actually, there's always a temptation to work al desco at work. Um, and so I would recommend breaking for lunch, even if you were office bound. Um, and if you're working at home with flatmates or partners, maybe make breaking for lunch a little ritual in the middle of the day. Maybe you prepare lunch together or maybe you prepare lunch for each other. Another thing, stay hydrated. This isn't simply about uh, your health. Um, this is actually one of the uh, side effects of having uh, drinking water throughout the day is that you have regular bathroom breaks, uh, which is good for your uh, ergonomics. They say that sitting is the new smoking, so um, having uh, regular water intake through the day, if that gets you up um, out of your seat for a while um, and stops you sort of being frozen at your screen and, and getting shoulder ache and back ache and that, and that sort of thing. If you are an extrovert who feels lonely, if, if you're finding this hard, um, consider having a SIP and Skype buddy. So someone that you can, uh, it might be a colleague, it might be a friend, that you can maybe have a daily coffee date with. Um, the equivalent of that water cooler chat, that hanging around in the kitchen, having a quick chat over a coffee. Uh, build that in 
to your day and you know find someone who feels the same who needs that human connection and just just to um, break up the day doesn't need to be long five ten minutes check in how are you um, just a little bit of downtime within the day so when it comes to the end of the day having a, a boundary at the end of the day marking the end of the day um, so that your work doesn't bleed into your evening First thing, if you're in the office, chances are you wouldn't just sneak out of the office without saying goodbye. So I suppose this is another variation on the on the don't go missing in action. Um, make up, mark the formal end of the day. Let everyone know that you're signing out. And do snooze your notifications. Log off everything and just formally mark that end of the day. Um, and if you're a manager, encourage your employees, your team to do the same, to, to mark the end of the day. Um, and at the end of the day, spend a few moments just reviewing and reflecting, thinking about the day that's just gone. What went well? What are you proud of? What, what do you need to do tomorrow? Just Getting all that stuff out of your head, I suppose it's it's like the to don't list, getting it out of your head and onto a piece of paper so you don't need to worry about it, um, so that you can enjoy the evening without thinking all the cognitive loads that, that having those tasks that you know you've got to do tomorrow or those worries from the day, get them out of your head and into the onto a piece of paper so that you can enjoy your evening. And Reshape your space. If you're working, if you have an office that you can, um, if you're lucky enough to have an office where you're working and you can just simply close the door, that's great. If, like me, you live in a, a central London apartment where space is at a premium, um, I reshape my space each night just by closing everything, putting everything away, all my papers away, and I'm just changing the lighting. So moving into candlelight just to mark the end of the day. Another thing, consider having a regular appointment with yourself. So um, it might be, I mean, if you've got children, you probably do have a regular appointment with yourself. Um, and th that will probably um, help you mark the end of the day. But um, for me, I, I, I'm child free. So for me, my regular evening appointment is I pick up my flute and I practice my flute so you might have an instrument or it might simply be dancing around the, the house with, with the children whatever it is something that means that you can't focus on work you can't play the flute well when you're when you're thinking about work um, although with hobbies again be kind to yourself I, I certainly know that before the outbreak I was practicing for my grade seven and now I'm just playing fun tunes that don't put, stre put stress on me. So again, don't feel that you have to be super productive in your, in your um, downtime either. And this point about marking the ends and beginnings of days, um, I think it also applies for the ends and beginnings of weeks. I was talking to a client earlier to earlier this week and we were talking about the weekend and what we did at the weekend and she said oh it all just blurs into one doesn't it you know what's the difference between friday and saturday night so maybe think about what your friday night ritual might be um for me uh, we've started um it, it's certainly in the uk uh, everyone will pile into the nearby pub after the office so um, we started creating um, Friday night is pub night, so we get beer in and snacks and and Zoom with friends. We even have um, YouTube soundtrack of uh, the sound of a, a pub to make it sound like we're in a pub. We're doing our best um, to to cope with the current situation, but but just anything that marks the end of the day, the end of the week, something that becomes a ritual so that it doesn't all bleed into one. And maybe even have a Sunday night ritual. Re recreate that sort of preparing for the week. Uh, it might be uh, 
ironing your dignity jumpers. That's that's a term I came across this week. The idea of the dignity jumper, which is the jumper that you throw on so that it doesn't look like you're you're hanging around in your in your sports clothes or whatever it is that you that you hang around with at home. So maybe it's you 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 iron the outfits that you're going to be wearing for the week or you make a plan for the week you start reflecting on what you've got to do in the morning so just marking the end of the weekend um i'm not saying that you need to maybe recreate the the monday night that the sunday night blues um uh, the dread of monday morning but actually maybe that is quite helpful right now so that's a quick run through of my top tips for working remotely um before we hand over for questions just to remind you of um the where you can get more uh, resources and uh, tips on working remotely as well as becoming a better writer um do visit dorisandbertie.com and if you go to writing school uh, and you can get 50 percent of the enrollment of uh, into all those courses. So we've got um, seven or eight courses that you can uh, enrol in and lots and lots of advice and tips and strategies for working remotely and writing remotely. So I will stop there and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Um, we are getting questions. If uh, Will we be sharing the slides with everyone? If I know we will be sending a recording uh, to everyone that's registered. Uh, and if um, I'll work with Dr. Claire, if you would be okay with sharing the slides, we can send those out too. Yeah, that's fine. I'm happy with that. Thank you. Uh, lots of, thank you so much. Lots of great tips here. Uh, thank you for Good. offering your services as a, as a discount to the group. I'm definitely looking into tomato-timer.com. I yeah. wrote that down my notes as, as, as you were speaking. And I think it's interesting, you know, with the creating a mock commute because the days seem to get, uh, you know, busier, or, or especially if you're not setting those those boundaries. And so to be able mm -hmm. to use that time uh, to reflect and, and that space, I think is, is key to ensure that, you know, you're able to be productive throughout the day. Um, yeah. We're getting great feedback this has been very helpful thank you excellent presentation um another somebody's excited about the tomato good yes <laughs> well. it, it will change your life <laughs> um and then i was also so i i liked also the the be liberal with with emojis in terms of communication mm -hmm. and to talk about the the small stuff so yeah, uh, lots of great tools. I uh, will leave one more minute for this is not a question. They want to say thank you. It was very informative. Um, looking forward to implement some of these. Great. Uh, wonderful. Lovely. Lots of comments. No questions. <laughs> great. Great. Okay, one well, final thought, Dr. Claire, before we wrap up. Um, just I think my final my final piece of advice is just be kind to yourselves. Um. Mm -hmm. And don't feel that you have to be your usual productive selves. Use the tomato timer, but yeah. be kind and be kind to your teams. <laughs> Especially as leaders, right? If you're managing a team to ensure yeah. that you've got to be kind to one another and understanding yeah. and flexible more, more than ever before. Um, yeah. Guys, everyone, thank you for joining us today. Uh, please continue to join us for the weekly webinars. Uh, we have live cafecito on Facebook on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. as well, 10 a.m. Central, I should say. Um, and uh, please reach out, let us know how else uh, ASIC can continue to be a resource to you during this time. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Claire Lynch, for your time, uh, for your insights. We value everything that you presented today uh, and we'll uh, continue to stay in touch. Thank you, everyone. Great. Thank you.